hello everyone i hope you're doing fine welcome to another video on our channel elevated 9 today i'll be talking about the microscopic anatomy of one of the most beautifully intricate structures in the body the human eyeball it may be compared to a camera but is much more advanced than any man-made camera it is roughly spherical in shape with the diameters mentioned on screen We can divide the eyeball into the layers making up its wall so to say and the inner contents of the eyeball. The layers or coats of the eyeball may further be divided into three parts. The outer fibrous coat made up of the sclera and cornea, middle vascular coat called uvea and the inner nerve layer known as retina. Let us discuss a little bit about the sclera now. It is part of the fibrous coat of the eyeball and forms its posterior 5 sixth. It is covered by t capsule in its entirety and conjunctiva anteriorly. The conjunctiva is a transparent membrane with blood vessels running through it. The junction of cornea with sclera is called limbus. It is pierced by the following set of apertures as shown on screen. Let us next move on to the anterior one sixth of the fibrous coat, which is formed by the cornea. It is one of the most transparent structures in the eye. It is avascular and has a watch glass like structure. It is responsible for most of the initial refraction of light rays entering the eyeball and acts like a convex lens. The diameters and radii of curvature of the cornea are displayed on screen. Let us now take a look at the other structures from inside the eye. The lens comes into view immediately and we are looking at it from behind. It is the, ma the other major part in the eye responsible for significant refraction. It is held in place by the ciliary zonules or suspensory ligaments. It is one of the structures which keeps growing throughout life. It is basically a biconvex lens with the anterior surface less curved than the posterior as seen on screen. Its refractive index is around 1.39 and contributes about 15 diopters of the total refractive power of the eye. Let us now come back to the middle vascular coat of the eyeball called as uvea. What you are seeing right now is part of the ciliary body known as pars plicata. The tissue is thrown into multiple folds known as ciliary processes. They give attachment to the zonules and also produce aqueous humor which fills the anterior and posterior chambers. As we move anteriorly, we see the anterior most part of the uvea known as iris. This structure is responsible for the color of the eye. The name iris is derived from the Greek goddess of the rainbow. It is basically a diaphragm like structure with a central opening called pupil. The pupil size varies based on the amount of light and various other factors. It basically regulates the amount of light entering the eye. The ciliary zone has various depressions known as crypts. Pupillary zone is relatively smoother. The choroid is the continuation of the uveal tissue posteriorly which is responsible for uh, blood supply to most of the posterior structures of the eyeball. Moving on to the innermost layer of the eyeball, the retina. What you are seeing on screen right now is the optic disc which is that part of the optic nerve which is seen inside the eye. It is around 1.5 mm in diameter. The nerve fiber layer of the retina continues on in the optic nerve. Retina is the nerve layer responsible for converting light into nerve impulses which are carried through the optic nerve eventually into the visual processing area of the brain. This is how retina appears on fundoscopy which is a procedure where retina is seen using different lenses. Centralmost part of the retina is known as macula. 
around 5.5 mm in diameter. It is temporal to the optic disc. Fovea is the central part of macula and foveola is the central most part of fovea. This part of retina has the highest density of cones and is responsible for the visual acuity. Retina ends anteriorly at the ora serrata. Moving into the cavities of the eyeball, we are in the vitreous cavity right now, filled with a transparent gel-like substance known as vitreous humor. The vitreous basically gives mechanical support and helps in refraction too. It also acts as a pathway for nutrients to reach the lens and retina. Moving anteriorly, there are two chambers separated by the iris, the anterior and posterior chambers. The anterior chamber is bound by the posterior surface of cornea and anterior surface of iris. Posterior chamber is bound by the posterior surface of iris and the anterior surface of lens. Aqueous humor is the transparent fluid that fills these two chambers and is produced by the ciliary processes into the posterior chamber which in turn moves into the anterior chamber through the pupil and eventually drains through the trabecular meshwork into the venous circulation of the eye. This is in brief regarding the gross anatomy of the eyeball. If you found this video helpful, please like and share it. Thank you for uh, watching it, dear viewers and subscribers. In case you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Thank you once again and see you in the next video.